Hello everyone. Welcome to this video tutorial by Simply Learn. In this video, we will learn about overfitting and underfitting in machine learning. We have our experienced instructor Richard who will take us through this video and help us understand the basics of overfitting and underfitting, the reasons why it occurs, and finally we'll look at a demo in Python. Over to Richard now. What is overfitting? What is underfitting? And those are like the biggest things right now in data science is overfitting and underfitting. What does that mean? So let's go ahead and talk about overfitting. Uh, when we talk about overfitting, it's a scenario where the machine learning model tries to learn from the details along with the noise. And the data tries to fit each data point on the curve. Uh, you can see that um, if you plug in your coordinates, you're just going to get the whatever is fitted every point on the data stream. There's no average. There's no two points that might have the, you know, Y might have two different answers because uh, if the wind blows a certain way um, and your efficiency of your car, maybe you have a headwind. So your car might alter how efficient it is as it goes. And so there's going to be this variance on here. And this says, no, you can't have any variance with, you know, the, this is, it's going to be exactly this. So it can't be any, you can't be the same speed or the same car and have a slightly different efficiency. So as the model has very f less flexibility, it fails to predict new data points. And thus the model rejects every new data point during the prediction. Uh, so you'll get like a really high error on here. And so uh, reasons for overfitting. Uh, data used for training is not cleaned and contains noise, garbage values in it. You can spend so much time cleaning your data and it's so important. It's so important that if you have, if you have some kind of something wrong with the data coming in, it needs to be addressed. Whether it's the source of the data, maybe they use in medical different measuring tools. Uh, so you now have to adjust for data that came in from hospital A versus hospital B or even off of machine A and machine B that's testing something and those, those numbers are coming in wrong. The model has a high variance. Uh, again, wind is a good example. I was talking about that with the car. You may have a hundred tests, but because the wind's blowing, it's all over the place. Uh, size of training data used is not enough. So a small amount of data is going to also cause this problem. You only have a few points and you try to plot everything. The model is too complex. Uh, this comes up a lot. We put too many pieces together and how they interact can't even be tracked. Um, and, and so you have to go back, break it up and find out actually what correlates and what doesn't. So, what is underfitting? A scenario where machine learning models can neither learn the relationship between the data points nor predict or classify a new data point. And you can see here we have uh, our efficiency of our car and our line drawn, and it's just going to be way off for both the training and the predicting data. As the model doesn't fully learn the patterns, it accepts every new data point during the prediction. So instead of looking for a general pattern, uh, we just kind of accept everything. Data used for training is not cleaned and contains noise, garbage, and values. Again, underfitting and overfitting, same issue. You gotta clean your data. The model has a high bias. Uh, we've seen this in all kinds of things from uh, the, mo the most common is the driving cars to facial identification or whatever it is. The model itself, when they build it, might have a bias towards one thing. And this would be an underfitted model would have that bias because it's averaged it out. So if you have um, uh, five people from India and 10 people from um, Africa and 20 people from the U.S., you created a bias uh, because it's looking at the 20 people and you only have a small amount of data to work with. Size of training data used is not enough. Uh, that goes with the size I was just talking about. So we have a model with a high bias. We have size of training data used is not enough. The model is too simple. Again, this is one straight line through all the data when it needs has a slight shift to it for other reasons. So what is a good fit? Uh, a linear curve that best fits the data is neither overfitting or underfitting models, but is just right. And of course, we have the nice examples here where we have overfitting, 
lines going up and down, every point's trying to be include, included, underfitting, uh, the line really is off from where the data is, and then a good fit is got to get rid of that, minimize that um, error coming through. So this is all exciting, but what does this look like? So we really need to jump in and put a code together and see what this looks like when we're programming. For this uh, demo, we'll bring up our trusty Anaconda and go into Jupyter Notebook for Python. Move myself out of the way here. Uh, and so we're going to start off, this is going to be a demo on overfitting and underfitting using Python. And let's start with our uh, imports. Now, if you've been through enough of these tutorials, we don't want to spend a huge amount of time on what we're bringing in and what we're doing. Uh, so you should be up on doing this with Python and how to bring in your different modules. Uh, we're going to bring in the sklearn or the uh, scikit processing, sklearn.neural-network import MLP regressor. So there's our regressor model right there. Uh, that's going to be our linear regression model. And we have our metrics, mean absolute error. If you remember, we had our, um, that's how we figure out how well it fits, is how far off that error is based on the um, squ mean square error value, MSE. And then, of course, uh, NumPy, because we just like to work with NumPy. It's a great data array. Uh, we always import it as MP. That's the most common way of doing it. And then we have SK Learn Model Selection Import Validation Curve. So we're going to look at a validation curve to see how good our models are. And then we have the uh, data set. We'll use the um, very famous IRIS data set, and that's embedded in the scikit. So the SK Learn data sets have a load IRIS in there. And then we have the matplot library, because if you're doing any kind of demo or showing this off to your shareholders, we want to have something nice to display it on. And then we have SK Learn model selection. We're going to import kfold. And we'll talk about that when we get to it. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and do, um, just for our numpy, we're going to do like a random seed for random numbers. And then for our plot style, we'll use the GG plot. That's just some back-end setup. Um, you could even probably leave the plot style out, uh, depending on what version of um, you're using, of, um, depending on what version you're using a matplot library. And then we'll go ahead and run this. Uh, it's not going to do anything that we can visibly see because it's just loading those modules. And then we also want to load our iris uh, data in here. And the iris data has an iris data and an iris target. Uh, we're going to load that as X and Y. And uh, just so you can have an idea what we're talking about, we're going to go ahead and print um, X. And just the first bit of X, we'll just do the top of X. And we'll also print Y so you can see what the top of Y looks like. Uh, print Y. Uh, and since we're in NumPy, we're going to go ahead and do our own thing. If this was, uh, of course, um, pandas, we could just do the head of it and see what it looks like. And you can see here we've loaded this up. And in X, we have these different measurements that they take of the flower, the iris flowers from this particular data set. And what kind of flower it is. It's going to be a 0, a 1, or a 2 is actually what the target comes out of, even though that doesn't show in here. And so we're going to come in here and we're going to use the k-folds cross-validation with 20-folds. Um, and a, a good catch that this was a model selection, we're, we're, we're going through and we're selecting different parts of the data in here. Here we use k-folds cross-validation with 20-folds, k equals 20, to evaluate the generalization efficiency of the model. Within each fold, we will then estimate the training and test error using the training and test sets respectfully. So here we have our KF equals KF, uh, K fold. Here's our splits on the top. And then we need to go ahead and have our list training error. We're going to create an array for that. We're going to list our testing error. And for train index and test index in KF.splitX, X train, Y, uh, X train and X test. We're going to go ahead and split up our, our data, our X values, and the same thing with the Y values. So now we have an X train and an X test, a Y train and a Y test. And then here's our model, our MPL, M, uh, MLP regressor. And that's your linear regressor model in there. And we have used a multi-layer perceptron, MLP. 
So this is a neural network, uh, multilayer perceptron. That's what the MLP is for. Regressor means that it is dealing with numbers. We're not categorizing things. Um, and then let's go ahead, uh, kind of went off the screen here. We'll just go ahead and bring that down. It's a class of feed-forward artificial neural networks. Uh, and they kind of loosely call it ANN. Don't get caught up in the ANN, NNN, MNN. There's, NN is neural network, and then everybody puts their own flavor on it depending on what they're doing. Uh, so if you see the NN, you know you're dealing with a neural network. So we go ahead and fit our data. Here's our model.fit. We have X train and Y train. And the Y train data we're going to predict equals uh, model.predict X train. So here's our prediction of what it's going to be. So we've trained it and we've predicted it. We've trained it our, our, uh, the train data and then we have our Y train. And then we have our Y test. And the Y test equals a model predict X test. Now notice what we did here is we're going to use our model to predict what we think Y should be, but it, this is the training set. Uh, so we've trained it with this data and now we want to see how good our model fits our training data. And then we want to see how well it fits our testing data. So we take our fold training error, mean absolute error, Y train, Y train data predict, and we're going to do our fold testing error, the mean absolute error of Y test and Y test data predict. And we do this, and here's our mean absolute error. There's our um, uh, little bit different connotation, but that's, that's taking the square value um, and finding the, in this case, it's using the absolute value. So instead of the square value, we get rid of the minus and pluses by using an absolute value. And we find the average of that. And that works the same way as doing a squared value. And then we take our list training error, and we're going to go ahead and just append it for each, uh, each one of these runs we go through. So every time we fold the data, think of it like this. Uh, we want to go ahead and take a piece of data. That's going to be one piece of the data, and we're going to look at each section. And we want to go through each section to see how well it does and splits it up. This way we have a nice picture uh, when we're looking at it from a distance. I do this a lot when I do X and when I split my X train and my Y train. I'll take two thirds of the data and then one third of the data and then I'll switch it and I'll do three different models so I can really see how well it tests out and how that averages out. This is the same thing but with the, uh, with the K fold we're doing and we're doing it across 20 sections. We'll go ahead and run this. And when we run this, it's not too exciting because we're just loading up the data and appending it into our list. And so what we want to take with this uh, is we're going to go ahead and plot it. And this is where we can really see what's going on. This is where, where it gets exciting. Uh, so we take it and we're going to create uh, a couple subplots. Uh, that way we have a nice setup down here. We're splitting it up into a couple different uh, graphs. And let's go ahead and run this, and then we'll walk through it a little bit. Uh, so our subplot comes in. Um, there's our subplot, and then our PLT plot we're going to do in there. Range 1, uh, we're going to go ahead and do the splits plus 1. In PRA, list training error, uh, ravel. Um, this is, of course, a, just a code to how we properly set it up on there so that it, it sees it correctly. And then we have our X label, which is our number fold. Uh, plot the Y label training error. Plot the title, training error across folds. Plot the tight layout. Plot the subplot. So we're going to move on to, this is 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 2. There's our 1, just 1 and 2. <laughs> um, it has to do with how it, how it layers it on there for doing multiple plots because you can do all kinds of cool things with our, plot, our PyPlot library. Uh, and again, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for the error. And we end up with our training error across folds and our testing error across folds. And so you can see these different folds, how they kind of spike and how they look. And so when we're talking about overfitting or underfitting. We're comparing these two graphs. And if one of them is more off than the other one, uh, if you're looking at these two graphs, you got to say, hey, is this one uh, um, overfit or underfit? And this is always a good question to ask. I mean, what do we got going here? Is that overfit or is that underfit? And I would say, based on these two graphs and the um, training data, uh, the training data is more sporadic than the testing data. 
So I would look at this and say, hey, uh, this might need to be fit a little bit better. Um, maybe we don't have enough data. With the iris, we probably don't. Something else is going on here. So it's a little underfit. Maybe a different model would fit better. Um, I would not use a neural network model for this. I would actually use just a basic linear, uh, linear model on this. A lot of different choices. Uh, but this gives you an idea. What we're looking at is how chaotic are these two? Is it getting better or is it getting worse? If at some point the training data gets so much better than the testing data, you know you've overfit it. And that's where you start running into the overfitting. This to me looks like it's underfit. So that concludes uh, underfitting and overfitting. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was useful and informative. If you liked this video, then please go ahead and subscribe to Simply Learn channel to stay updated with all the latest trending technologies. Stay tuned for more from Simply Learn. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.